We will begin by going over the general setup. First, ensure that you have your gown, water, lubricant, gloves, tubing, and single-use endoscopy buttons on the field. To set up the scope, pair up the blue and red buttons in front of the wheel. Then place the biopsy valve onto the instrument channel. Press the red button for suction. Hold your finger over the blue button for insufflation. Press the blue button for flushing through the auxiliary water channel. This allows for cleaning of the visual field. The main components of the tower are the scope, water container, suction, irrigation pump, light source, and insufflation, which may use CO2 or air. First, plug the scope into the central piece of the tower. Then, twist the two-piece cap onto the water bottle. The white end of the tube connects to the scope. The blue tip of the tubing connects to the scope through the irrigation pump. The third piece of tubing with a round end connects to the CO2. Finally, connect the suction tubing. The irrigation pump is utilized for flushing via the auxiliary channel with a high flow rate, which allows rapid clearing of large amounts of debris in insufficiently prepped patients undergoing colonoscopy. Open the pump head lever Insert a loop of tubing into the pump head, ensuring that the flow will follow the direction of the arrow. Close the pump head lever. Press and hold the light button to turn on the light at the end of the scope. You may switch to use high definition narrow band imaging, which can be used to assess the histology of diminutive colorectal polyps. The CO2 source will allow you to use CO2 during the procedure. During colonoscopy, the colon needs to be distended in order to increase visibility and availability of lesions. Traditionally, eight to seven liters of room air is used for insufflation as compared to one liter a day normally produced by the intestine. Room air consists of mainly nitrogen and oxygen. Make sure that air is on standby if using CO2. CO2 is absorbed 160 times faster than nitrogen and 12 times faster than oxygen. Hence, utilizing CO2 decreases the period of distended colon. This leads to decreased patient discomfort after the procedure. The maneuvers that we will discuss include tip deflection, torque, dithering, aspiration, hooking and straightening, and slide-by technique. Tip deflection is the most fundamental technique. The goal is to keep the lumen in view. The big outer wheel controls vertical deflection, while the smaller inner wheel controls lateral deflection. The tip is in the neutral position when the letters on both wheels are pointed upward. This video demonstrates the outer wheel controls vertical deflection, moving the tip up and down. The inner wheel controls lateral deflection, moving the tip left and right. The wheels can be used in combination. Torque is also a key technique, particularly in the sigmoid. Clockwise torque straightens the colonoscope, which accordionizes the sigmoid around the scope, moving the tip proximally relative to the surrounding sigmoid. Loops often form in the sigmoid, at which time you should pull back the shaft and apply clockwise torque to remove the loop. Counterclockwise torque, on the other hand, would exacerbate the curve of the colonoscope. This creates the effect of paradoxical motion, which causes the tip to withdraw relative to the surrounding colon. Torquing to keep the lumen in view can be more effective than deflecting the tip, and torque in combination with one deflection wheel is often more effective than a combination of both wheels. 
Dithering is the action of rapidly shaking the colonoscope. This creates a sinusoidal wave, which separates the colonoscope into the lumen away from the surrounding mucosa, making it easier to advance. Dithering helps pleat the colon onto the colonoscope, shortening the length of the bowel surrounding the scope. Aspiration involves first distending the colon with insufflation, then suctioning to aspirate the air from the lumen. When the surrounding colon is no longer distended, the length should decrease. This is especially useful in the ascending or right colon. Hooking and straightening is a more advanced technique, but it can be particularly useful in a tortuous sigmoid. The scope tip is turned 30 to 90 degrees across the sharp angle of a mucosal fold. The scope is then slowly withdrawn several centimeters, catching the turn of the scope around the angle of the turn in the colon, which straightens the angle as the scope is pulled back. The scope can then be advanced forward. Slide-by is one of the more advanced techniques that a trainee may be exposed to, and beginners should not attempt it due to the high risk of iatrogenic perforation. It is a blind technique in which the proceduralist pushes the tip forward in the anticipated direction of the lumen. It is most commonly applied in the rectosigmoid.